I'm Connor Old and welcome back to another episode of Old's Oscar Countdown. And this week we're going to be looking at the sound categories. Everything to do with music, everything to do with sound. So we're going to be looking at the best original score category, the best newly introduced category, best sound, and the best original song category, all coming up next. But what I do every single week is break down a different Oscar category, give you an analysis of all the potential nominations, including my picks of what will get nominated. We're getting closer into the award season. We've already had Golden Globes, SAG. We're starting to get a lot of the uh, recognition of the award seasons. So the landscape is changing and shifting and moving all the time. But that's why you come to this channel to get the most up-to-date, accurate analysis and predictions and hear my thoughts based on what I bring and over five years of Oscar prediction experience. But starting off with the first category, I'm going to be talking about the best original score category with my first pick being News of the World. Now, this is a category, the best score category, that often likes to nominate people who they like. Similar to other categories like something director or cinematographers, oftentimes, even though the names of the people don't show up on the ballots, it will just say News of the World for best original score. The score branch of the Academy votes for the original score so that they know the people who are doing these as seen by their propensity to nominate people who, who have been nominated before. Uh, and as a matter of fact, over the past 10 years, an average of 3.3 out of the five nominees who have been nominated previously. And not only that do they nominate people who have been nominated before, but they often have like a, a sort of few group of guys that they like to nominate. And a couple of them will be showing up later. And one of them, I think, is James Newton Howard. This is a guy who's been nominated eight times and has been nominated for movies that people don't really remember or people don't necessarily think of their score. As a matter of fact, a couple of the, of the movies he's been nominated for before, My Best Friend's Wedding, The Village, Defiance, these are movies that had no other nominations except for the score nomination, indicating that they actually really like James Newton Howard as a composer. And this year, what does he have? He has an Oscar movie in News of the World, which I believe will get a Best Picture nomination, including maybe even screenplay and a lot of technical awards, in including this one. So I think that this is a good, a good chance for James Newton Howard to get nominated because he's a guy that's been nominated before because they like him, because News of the World has a lot of technical support. And more generally, the movie is well liked. It's also a movie that has a great score in terms of the traditional Western element, that there are sort of the bar song, there are sort of the emotional moments that definitely hit and, and are elevated by the score. I think the score is noticeable. And for a lot of people, a noticeable score equals a good score. So for this one, it's traditional. Yes, it doesn't have a theme, but does have a sort of old timey Western feel that contributes to the film. So you have a well-liked composer with a well-liked film with a score that is uh, noticeable. I think James Newton Howard has never won before, but he very well could win for this one. Then my second nomination is Soul. So this is from Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross of the Nine Inch Nails fame. They have first arrived onto the scene with their first film score in 2010 being The Social Network, in which they won the Oscar, yet since then have never been nominated, despite doing Oscar movies like Patriot's Day or Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. But it's interesting to see that this year, not only do they have one movie in contention, but they actually have two that are in contention for both Soul and Mank. But despite that, I still went with only one nomination. I still think that they're only going to get nominated once, and I picked that movie to be Soul. Now, I picked Soul instead of something like Mank because, well, it's not as well appreciated as something like Mank. I do think it has a more noticeable score. It has themes to it. Of course, the movie is about a musician. So you have Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross, but also John Baptiste, who is doing a lot of the jazz compositions within the film. It's also a movie that has sort of the balance, has the traditional electronic elements when we're in the great beyond and, and in that realm, but also in the New York elements that are jazzy elements that that, that, that brings as well. Now, it's not uncommon for this category to nominate uh, the same person, the same composer, twice in the same year. Happened in 2014, happened in 2011 with uh, John Williams. So it's not uncommon for someone to get nominated twice. However, this is still somebody in Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross who have never been nominated aside from their one win for The Social Network. So I think that is important. I also am a little bit skeptical in terms of how the, the race will play out. I mentioned that three... 0.3 out of 5 is the average number of people in this category who have been nominated before. But it seems like for a lot of predictions and for a lot of people, all five of their predictions and nominations are for people who have been nominated before. So I'm a little bit weary that way. So in my sense, I look at Soul, I look at it's a great score, but it's also maybe a noticeable score. It's also a movie that's been winning a lot of the Critics' Choice Awards. That While Soul and Mank have been both been nominated in the Critics' Awards, Soul has been really sweeping up. So if there's a stronger movie, and if I were to pick one of the two, I went with Soul. Now I may change my mind and I might 
predictions, but just be aware of some of the stats and some of the elements of when you're actually making your five predictions. Are they all people who have been nominated before? Maybe you want to put in one person who hasn't been. These things matter. What's the strength of the film? Usually the, the score category doesn't really worry about the strength of the movie so much, but of course it always does help. Then with my third pick, I went with the score from The Midnight Sky. And why is that? Because it's scored by Alexander Displa. And pretty much every time he has a score and, and, and is in the sort of has a score for a movie that's in the Oscar conversation, almost every time he gets nominated. As a matter of fact, in the past decade, he's been nominated eight times, just in the past decade, and has won twice just in the past decade. He is the guy who's really red hot right now, really well respected. And in movies like I Love Dogs, which aren't super big Oscar movies, he still gets nominated for Best Composing because they respect him so much. And I think the score from Midnight Sky is very good at keeping sort of the grand elements, but also that fantastic element that this blah is only able to do. I also think this is a movie that should get other some other technical nominations that even though it's not going to get in, I think for Best Picture, for Best Director, I do think it could very well get in for some of these technical elements. And I think people are still watching it. I still think it is an Oscar movie backed by Netflix, which is great at supporting their films. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Alexander Desplat here. I think it's pretty much a lock. Even though the movie isn't as celebrated as the past two, I still think that the score and the reputation behind Desplat should get him nominated. Then my next pick, I went with Tenant. This is from Ludwig Göransson, who won recently a couple years ago for Black Panther. So this, so every year there seems to be sort of a, a young, hot, new composer that not only gets nominated, but oftentimes win, whether it be someone like Hilary Gunther for Joker or the year before Ludwig for Black Panther. So he's a guy who's been nominated before and has won before, but still feels like the young kid energy. This is also a score for a movie done by Christopher Nolan, who's notoriously known for using Hans Zimmer for his scores. So he came in with big shoes to fill and really delivers a great score. It's also This movie has also been winning some of the critics' awards. It has a Pulsive element to it, and while Tenant shouldn't be a Best Picture winner, I do still expect it to get some technical categories, as we're going to be talking about a little bit later. So I think that Ludwig is sort of the new hot composer. He should be well respected. It's not a guarantee slam dunk, but I do think it's also sort of a different kind of score than some of the other ones that I expect to get nominated from a guy who I think is well respected and has that appreciation of filling in the shoes of someone like Hans Zimmer and really stepping up to that plate. Then my final pick, I went with Minari. This is from Emile Mosseri. He's a composer who is very much the new composer. He's never been nominated before. He got a sort of international acclaim, I think, for his uh, movie, for his score for The Last Black Man in San Francisco, which had a terrific score. And once again, now doing a score for a movie in Minari, which is also has that sort of indie spirit, except it should be very well liked. It should be very well nominated. I think it's also a movie that's been overperforming, getting in, doing very well at SAG, getting in some critical nominations for Golden Globe. So I expect Minari to do well within the Academy and, and at the Oscars. And I also, like I said before, I looked at the category and I go, there's an average of 3.3 out of five of the nominations have been people who've been nominated before. But the inverse of that, of course, is that 2.7 people didn't, weren't nominated before. So for a lot of people, you look at the top five, it's Mank, it's Soul, it's uh, News of the World, it's Tenant, it's Midnight Sky. And then you go, well, all those guys have been nominated before, including a movie, including two guys who are getting nominated twice. So I think that even though this category does like to reward guys they've nominated before, they still like to reward someone that's new, a new composer, oftentimes Hilder Gutenberg or Stephen Price, people who've never been nominated before and then do get nominated. So I think for a movie that should be well liked, it's a different type of score as well as some of the little bit more electronic or classical scores. This is a little bit more quieter and softer, but still an excellent score on that. And I think I'm banking on the fact that this is still a new composer and that should give an extra little bit boost and a little benefit to the movie. Then I mentioned before my first honorable mention is Mank because it could get in. It could actually win maybe at the Globes and shows that actually no, of Spank versus Soul, Mank is actually the stronger film. It's also from Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross, which is, and they are well respected, and it's a movie that I still expect to get nominated in multiple categories, particularly these tech categories. So not writing it out. Like I said, it happened in 2014 and 2011, these dual nominations. So it's not to say it's unlikely to happen. It very well much could happen, but right now, I think really any of the, uh, the sort of top seven or eight could get in. It's just an either or and what you feel a little bit more confident in. And then my final pick in terms of the honorable mention is The Little Things, Thomas Newman. And this is a, a score that could very much well get in as sort of the upset surprise. Now, we know this is a movie, Little Things, that has been seen by the Jared Leto SAG nomination and the Golden Globe nomination. So we know people are seeing it. We understand that Thomas Newman has also, had they 
that the Warren Brothers has really been campaigning for Thomas Newman to get a nomination. He's a guy who's been nominated 15 times without ever winning, so that's a crucial element. Um, so maybe they want to sort of finally give him a reward. That uh, narrative could very much build. And he's also a guy who, when he does get nominated, oftentimes is for movies that are surprises. His score for The Good German, no one predicted that. His score for Passengers, no one even realized that was on the radar. But because they like him so much, they will nominate him in these sort of odd scenarios. So why Watch out for the little things, even though it's my second honorable mention, it very well could slip in. So now jumping into the sound category, this is a new category, so I just want to break it down at the top here. Essentially, before, there was sound mixing and sound editing, two different categories. And there was always sort of a confusion, I think, between predictors and, and prognosticators and people who actually voted on the awards of, of what the difference was. And, and generally speaking, sound editing was for more war movies and action movies and sound mixing went to more, say, music type films. And, and sometimes they overlapped the winner, something like Dunkirk or Bad Max Free Road, won in both categories. But then something like nine, uh, last year with 1917 and Ford Free Ferrari, there was a split. So this year, they just decided to do one category and it'll be interesting to see. We don't have any experience with just one category. We can look at BAFTA, which only has one category, or try to see a combination of the two. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see where the sort of sound branch lies. Will they want to nominate a traditionally sort of sound mix movie, like something like a, a music film, or, or more just based on sound editing and the big, loud action movies? Will that get rewarded? It'll be an interesting balance to see, but ultimately I interpret it as I think there's going to be a combination of the two. So there's going to be like one mixing and then maybe mostly sound editing and I did want to sort of incorporate and when you're making your predictions I think do incorporate the more traditionally sound mixing and sound editing and, and put them into one category. So my first pick has to do with that. I'm going to go with Ma Rainey's Black Bottom as a nomination. Now, I don't necessarily think this should win or will win, but I feel confident this will get nominated because out of all my predictions and even my honorable mentions, I think this is the most sound mixing kind of a movie. This is a movie that, of course, is about a recording artist. It's about recording and, 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 a, and, and a recording booth and Ma Rainey talking about how they steal your voice and sort of that element of the business. So it, the, the themes of the movie, I think, will resonate to, to sound recorders but also it is very much a movie about recording and about music and about dialogue and about singing and how that sort of combines in together the, the singing are these really great sequences but also these sort of overlapping parts of dialogue which are very clear and interesting to, to see and hear. I also think it's going to be a movie that will get nominated for Best Picture and will get in for Best Adapted Screenplay. So there, it, it, I do think it's a movie that will be well respected particularly above the above the line categories. I also predict Viola Davis and Chadwick Boseman both getting in for nominations. So when we're going into these categories, ultimately, I think, especially in the technical categories, particularly in some of these sound categories, you just go for movies that are well liked. You just go for movies that people generally enjoy. And I think Ma Rainey's movie, uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, is a movie that people enjoy while having the right content matter, while being the sort of sole sound mixing nominee within this sound category. So I expect Ma Rainey to get in. And then my next pick, I went with Sound of Metal. This has some of the best sound design I've seen in years. One of my favorite movies of the year and seems to be like that for a lot of members of the Academy. It seems to be the discovery where they feel very passionately about. And even if you aren't a big fan of it, I think you do agree though that it has great sound design, unique creative versions of that sound design. What they're able to do by putting you in the head of Riz Ahmed's character is really fascinating. And this could very much be like a whiplash situation where it gets a supporting actor nomination and maybe gets in for editing and gets in here for for best sound that, that could very much see that happening and, and it is all about hearing and not necessarily music but but about that sound design and the creativity that it brings i think it would really be a shame if it doesn't get nominated but sound of metal is still a movie that could get nominated for best actor best supporting actor so it has a lot of support so it does make also, also logical sense that it would it would get in here for this category then my third nomination, I'm going to go with Soul. This is a movie about music, unlike sort of recording artists, but the, the content does still factor in that it's about a musician, it's about sounds, it's about life uh, more, more largely, but I do think will resonate with the Sound Editors Guild and in terms of the Motion Picture Sound Editors Guild, which we're going to have to see before the Oscar nominations, what they like to do, the Cinema Audio Society, see what they like to nominate. So there'll be sort of, we have to look at those nominations and I may change based on that. We haven't seen those yet. Um, so I, I'm like I said, I may change ultimately when we come to the final Oscar nominations, but I think Soul is a movie that should, in a different way, 
feel unique within this category, that while there's some of these sound editing ones that are about realistic elements and what it feels like in the case of Sound of Metal or a large action movie in the case of Greyhound, I think Soul is a movie that has creative sound. That oftentimes we see the Star Wars movies or sci-fi movies get nominated in these sound categories. Why? Well, my prediction has always been that it's a creative sound, that in terms of creating sound, that's very hard to do. For an animated movie, of course, there's no people walking around. There's this whole world that you create. And then it's the sound designer's job to really create that music. And I think this, the, the sound branch of the Academy will really appreciate that, that different style of ability, where it's not trying to recreate reality, but it's actually trying to create something new. And that creative instinct we often see in sci-fi movies getting nominated. But while I don't think there's going to be a sci-fi movie in sort of a, a hyper-realistic sense, to get nominated, I do think Soul sort of fills in that gap of being the creative choice. And then my next nomination is Mank. And in any other year, this may have been a weird choice, but I think Mank is very well respected in the technical element because it recreates old Hollywood. It has some of that distorted element of, of dialogue where it doesn't feel like a really old movie. It has that kind of weird choppy kind of sound dialogue, but does have a little bit of that uh, of that element. There was more, most recently also a, a profile done in IndieWire of Rand Kleiss, who is the sound uh, designer for pretty much all of David Fincher's movies. And David Fincher is a guy who sometimes uses the same cinematographer, but goes back and forth and doesn't use always the same actors. And for, for a lot of people, particularly with great directors, there's always a, a narrative that people like to think of where it's like their closest collaborator. If you think of someone like Martin Scorsese, Thelma Schoonmaker has, has edited almost all of his films. Um, even something like Janusz Kaminski and Spielberg, their, their collaboration together, that usually throughout a director's career, there usually is one person that sort of connects them uh, to one another. And I think for David Fincher, he didn't really have a cinematographer or, or an editor for that factor, for that matter, to sort of be connected in terms of all of his movies. But what is connected throughout all of his movies is the sound editor of Ren Kleist. So I think that there will be uh, an appreciation of, if you've read that profile, appreciation of what they do, the more subtle sound effects that they do to make you either uneasy or in this case to recreate a period atmosphere and sort of the, the intense amount of work that they've done and, and the factor and the tension of detail that they have for this movie and for the sound design of this movie in which you wouldn't think about but actually does. So it's all dependent on campaigning and if people have read that and sort of the industry talking behind it but I think Ren Kleiss is someone who hasn't been nominated before but is so well appreciated I think by some of these articles that talk about his collaboration with David Fincher and that connection I think will sort of finally be realized by a lot of Academy members and actually it sort of boosts his chances to get in along with the fact that it does sort of capture that period detail and it's a movie that should be well liked so there are other factors too but I think that that's an additional sort of extra factor why I put it in here. And my final slot, I'm going to go with News of the World, and that's because I think this is the most action-y movie of the most well-liked Best Picture nominations. If we see movies like 1917 or Dunkirk, they like the big, loud, action war movie. Now, we don't really have that this year, but what we do have is an action western in the case of News of the World. That we have the quiet moments and the crickets, but also some tense action sequences, so it feels like a little bit more of a traditional, below-the-line kind of a movie. I think it should be well-liked, particularly in these below the line categories. And I think the movie will get nominated for Best Picture. So as a result, I think it makes sense for it to get nominated for News of the World. That is the more it's the most traditional of the sound nominees. So I expect that to get in. Now, my first in the running pick is Tenant. Now, this may be a surprise to a lot of people because for a lot of people, this maybe could win. This could get nominated. This is very high up in a lot of people's predictions. But in my opinion, I liken this to something like Black Panther for visual effects. If you remember a couple years ago, everyone thought Black Panther would win for visual effects. It won all the critics awards. Why? Because it was a movie that was doing very well. It was very well liked. But the issue was the visual effects were poor. They were rushed. They weren't done very well. And what happened? Black Panther didn't even get nominated. As predicted by myself. So you look at the nominations here and I go for Tenant and, and the number one complaint of Tenant and a lot of Christopher Nolan movies but particularly Tenant I think is I couldn't understand what they're saying. They have these masks on, I can't hear them. It's a big complaint for a lot of people. So if you think about it logically, you know, why are you picking Tenant? Some of the reasons are is that NY could get nominated is because it has a lot of Christopher Nolan sound designers who have been nominated before and they're well respected within the industry. But the problem is, I think, is that when people are nominating it, I think they'll just go, 
that doesn't make any sense. I don't like the sound design in Tenant. I can't hear it. It was a problem. So it's actively bad in many ways. So I think there's going to be the Black Panther visual effects fact, the factor that Tenant should get nominated for Best Sound in any other year because the movie is generally well liked and should get these technical nominations. But I just think that people have so much of a problem with Tenet that they're not going to nominate at all. So as a matter of fact, I'm leaving it off my picks. Now, maybe it sweeps up in the Cinema Audio Society or the Motion Picture Sound Editors Guild in which I will maybe put it in my five. But as of right now, I still think that factor that because it's a huge problem with Tenet, the sound, why would people not nominate for sound? A little bit more of a conjecture element, but that's the element that, that and sort of reading into it that I'm doing. And then my final in the running pick, I went with Greyhound. I think this was, could be a surprise nomination. Something like 13 Hours has been has been nominated before. Um, you know, certain movies where you go, oh, that's kind of strange. Why that movie? That you know, movies that get one nomination and somehow they pull in for best sound. It's loud. It has a sort of big cranking of the ships. It's a, it's quite entertaining movie, and I think the sound design is very well done. Um, but it could be sort of the big surprise where no one really understands, oh, Greyhound, that's not going to get any other nominations. It's not even in the contention for any other nominations. But the sound people really appreciate what they did with that movie, and then they'll nominate it. Could be the surprise movie, so I think if I were to pick a surprise one, it would be Greyhound, but it's still on the outset as of right now. Now going to the best original song category, my first pick is going to be Scene from the Life of Head. Now this is a song that has been written by Diane Warren. Diane Warren has two movies in the shortlist and is probably the most acclaimed uh, songwriter, particularly with the Oscars and for getting nominated. She's been nominated a total of 11 times and has two movies in contention for this, which you could say maybe there's going to be a little bit of a split, but The Life of Head had a Golden Globe nomination. There was always the sort of buzz and conversation of maybe Sophia Loren gets in for Best um, Actress. That could still happen. So it's a more popular movie than the one and only Ivan and is a movie that people are seeing. But more importantly, this is written by Diane Warren. She's been nominated 11 times. She's very well respected within the industry. If her name's on a song, frankly, it gets nominated so i think this is pretty much a lock to get nominated and i would be shocked if it didn't so seeing the life ahead put it in my next pick is going to be speak now from one night in miami this is sung by leslie odom jr who i predict to get nominated for best supporting actor for one, for one night in miami he's also most known known most most known for being in hamilton in which he, of course he does a lot of singing in, in, in the movie he's playing sam cook and does his own singing and tries to sound like sam cook in which i think he does a, a terrific job and now this is also a sort of song that has a sort of fight the power kind of it fight the injustice kind of a of a song to it and i think this is going to be a common theme this year with the past of my the rest of my nominations there's often every year at least one a fight the injustice kind of a system whether it be i'll fight from rgb or stand up and fight i think from uh, marshall or there's just stand up from harriet i mean we get all these sort of songs every other year to, to actually get nominated at the oscars and i think this year with the black lives matter movement they'll feel more prescient than ever and the first one i think that sort of fits that mold is speak now because it's one night in miami a movie that should be well liked and get a lot of top of the line nominations including Leslie Odom Jr., the star who sings it, and we see that oftentimes do a, a great, great sort of connection and, and, and work with someone like Mary J. Blige, gets nominated for Best Supporting Actress, but then also gets nominated for Best Original Song for Mudbound. Then my next prediction is going to be Turntables from the documentary, documentary All In, The Fight for Democracy. This is from Janelle Monet, who's always been in the Oscar conversation, whether it be Moonlight or Hidden Figures or performing at last year's Oscars. So even though this is a more subtle documentary, still fits into that mold of the fight the injustice, fight the power kind of a song. And I think will feel relevant also by someone who is very well respected in someone like Janelle and Monet. So even though the movie may not even get in for best documentary, I do think it gets in for best song. And it was nominated at the Golden Globes, which is really the only sort of barometer we can go and, and judge based on. And then with my next pick, I went with Fight For You from Judas and the Black Messiah. As I predicted all the way back in October, Judas and the Black Messiah would be a late-breaking contender after its premiere at Sundance. Of course, that's exactly how it played out. Premiere to rapturous reviews at Sundance, critically acclaimed. Warren Brothers is definitely pushing this, this as maybe even a Best Picture contender, or maybe someone like Daniel Kaluuya for winning for Best Supporting Actor. And I think that this will sort of succeed of the film. That have we seen so far what, what award season has told us so far is that recency bias definitely helps definitely counts that jared leto for the little things was a movie no one thought would be an oscar contender but as a matter of fact they had just saw it a couple weeks before so they were like hey i remember that that was a good performance i'll write it down so those things definitely help the movie and i think that 
for something like uh, Judas and the Black Messiah, which are, they're just seeing right now, I think Fight For You will have that resonance. It's also sung by H.E.R., her, who most recently performed a song at the Super Bowl. So she has some cultural relevance too. So ultimately that's why I went with Judas and the Black Messiah here, because of the strength of the film, because of the recency bias, and because of some of that celebrity element too. And then my final nomination, I went with Husevik from Eurovision Song Contest, the Rachel McAdams and Will Ferrell movie. I think this is a song that feels the most um, part of the movie, where every other uh, one of the songs are sort of end credit song sequences are not really tied too much to the movie. Husevik definitely is. I mean, Eurovision Song Contest was a big movie on Netflix, but also the, the, the contest, Eurovision, the, the real one, is huge in, in Europe. Even though it's not very popular in North America, I think it's going to be, it is huge in, in, in Europe. So as the Academy, you start thinking about, it, hey, they're more international, more than ever. So as a matter of fact, I think that the support of the movie will be actually coming from the international branch, from the Europe, Europeans, and will want to nominate the song, which has sort of the climactic kind of dramatic element within the film. It has the, the relevance. It's not just an end credit song. It's funny and has that element of, of the comedy. So it could be sort of on the outside, but I think this one could actually get nominated. Maybe it's Wuhan Flu for Borat's subsequent movie film. This is definitely more of a production-based actual song rather than sort of a funny joke in the sense of Wuhan Flu. Then in the running, my first pick is Hear My Voice from Trial of the Chicago 7. Another sort of fight the injustice kind of a song, except I went with Judas and the Black Messiah because that has a little bit more of a celebrity element, more culturally re relevant in someone like H.E.R., her. Um, versus someone like Celeste, who is a little bit less known for this song. I also think that almost all the nominations are like these fight the power and justice systems. And I think there's going to be more than normal, but I'm not sure if there's going to be four out of five of them. So ultimately I went with a comedy slot because I think it's just going to feel a little bit different. And when you're listening to all the songs in a row on Spotify or Apple Music, you're going to think, oh wait, they all sort of blend in and feel the same. I'll nominate the comedy song. And I think Trial of Chicago 7 leaves out, but maybe it's swapped. You can, I think you can easily swap them with that and Judas and the Black Messiah, depending on what you think of the movie. But I think the recency bias and the celebrity factor edges out Judas and the Black Messiah. And then my final pick, I'm just going to go with Rain Song from Minari. This is a movie, this is a movie that, like I said, should be a well-liked. I do think will sort of overperform. It's also a song that is different than the other songs. It's not Fight the Injustice one. It's softer, it's quieter, it's a little bit different. So if you really like the movie, you could sort of slip in here, but right now it's still on the outside chances of getting that nomination because it hasn't been nominated anywhere else. But that's about it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you comment below. Let me know your picks for all three categories. And if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel and like it and give a comment. All those things really help to support the channel. And I appreciate all your support you've been giving so far, which has been terrific. But that's about it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned to the channel so you never miss a video. And until next time, stay tuned.